peace and blessings to you this day. It is a good and glorious day. It is a day to celebrate. It is Maundy Thursday. It is a day where we remember all that Christ did for us, that we are mindful of what is coming with Good Friday and the darkness of Saturday. And yes, we can enjoy that resurrection coming on the first Sunday of Easter. This is the good and glorious day of our God and King. It is a good and glorious day to celebrate. My name is Reverend Roy Scarborough. I'm coming to you from Big Spring Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of Big Spring and Clover Hill, I bid you welcome. It is a joy that we can worship online. I am here at the uh, sanctuary. I hope you have established a holy place for your own personal worship, since that's what we do a lot of these days. Um, it is a blessing that we can celebrate communion, um, as would have been Jesus with his disciples on that night that he was betrayed. Per normal thing, as we do during our uh, new online situation, you don't have to have any special bread or a special cup or a special beverage. It is a common thing. Obviously, in community church, we try to use grape juice and we try to have fresh bread, but we can use whatever. Had the time of Christ's betrayal, he was celebrating the Passover. So they would have had uh, been wearing clothes set up to travel. They would have had a bread without any leaven in it. It would have been a flat, flat piece of bread. I grabbed something quick today. This is just two uh, dinner rolls. It will serve the purpose, and I have some grape juice, but I hope that you will get those elements and set up and that you will partake with me. But even if you choose not to, I pray that you will hear these words that you will thank on our God and that we can continue to enjoy and celebrate all through this Holy Week. Peace of Christ to be with you. Let us go to our loving God in prayer. God of grace and glory, Lord of love, we thank you for all the opportunities we have to worship. It is a sweet blessing to be able to join together with fellow believers to be encouraged in the presence of your spirit and in the smiling faces of fellow Christians. We thank you, God, that we have many opportunities to join together, but we thank you that we can also connect online, that we can take a moment together and enjoy even though we are not face to face, we can enjoy by your spirit, your love and care. We can enjoy the connection with each other via this blessing of the internet. We thank you that we can use it in this good way, Lord. We pray for all those who may be led astray by it. We pray for all of us, Lord, for we are so often led astray. We rejoice that you are our good shepherd, O holy God. We thank you that you come after each of us lost sheep that you continue to call us to turn back to you, to join with the family of God and be that blessing that you've called and made us to be. I thank you, O Holy Lord, for all those who are watching. I rejoice, great and majestic King, that you bind us together by your love, that you send us out filled with hope, that you call us in to be filled up with peace in knowing that you love and care for us. I pray, O oh Holy God, as Paul did, that we will fully begin to grasp the width and depth and height and breadth of your great love for us. I pray that we will start to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom, that we may truly understand and see all that you are doing, and that by your Spirit we will rise up and go out and join in your good work. I thank you, God, and I praise you. And we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
since I am so mindful of the joy of having the Good Shepherd. We will have our opening psalm be the 23rd psalm. It is such a wonderful and comforting thing, and I pray that we will hear these words anew, that we will visualize a shepherd and the sheep and the good places that the shepherd leads and all the protection that God gives us. May our hearts and minds be open to hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is such a great comfort to think about those words to be encouraged, to be inspired, to know that we have a shepherd who is always watching, that he goes before us, that he comes along behind us, that he is beside us. There's so many things that throw us from that mindset, unfortunately, so many times that we ourselves and the people of Scripture lose sight of the power of God being with us. We're so human. We're so easily distracted. So, so, so powerful do we let the world become that we miss out on what God is doing. Prime example of that, and of course the power of having a meal, can be seen in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 4 through 8. This is one of those primary times where even the great and mighty prophets can have a weak moment. You might recall that Elijah, as God's prophet, had told the people there would be a drought. And the drought occurred, and all these people were trying to find Elijah, and they couldn't find him. And he was being fed by ravens as he was hid out waiting for the Lord to have his time come. And of course, as the drought was getting very severe, uh, Elijah was called to have a challenge to the priests of Baal. And, of course, he won that mightily as God demonstrated God's power. They had all that dry everything, and they drowned it in the, the water time and time again. There was a pool of water around it, and God sent down fire so great and wonderful that it lapped it up. And right after that, Elijah was threatened, and he was thinking he was done for. He had lost sight of what all God has done. So let us hear this reading from 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8. But Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there was a, at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate, he, he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of the food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
That's an amazing tale, isn't it? It's, it's so easy for us to discount what God did that Elijah the prophet could go on that one cake and that water and do all that. His body obviously had some stores, but more importantly, he had God with him. For when God sends us to do a task, he prepares us, he cares for us, he enables great and mighty things to happen. Think of the power of the Passover that not only was God providing an escape for the children of Israel, he was allowing them to be spared the destruction that was to come by the stubbornness and boldness of the Pharaoh. But to even think that the sandals didn't wear out for the disciples wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, same pair of shoes for 40 years, I know from hearing some of y'all talk about your shoe collection, that just seems terrible. But they didn't have a whole bunch of shoes to take with them. They just had that one pair, and it lasted that long. Not because it was such a wonderful, well-made pair of shoes, but because the Lord was there and was taking care of things. Our God is that good shepherd that continually watches over us, continually cares for us. And on that night that he was betrayed, he was sharing so much great information with his disciples, spending time with them, doing and showing and demonstrating as a good shepherd would, especially one recognizing he's about to not be with them. I'm choosing for us to hear these words from John chapter 13, 1 through 11. There's so many wonderful passages I could read. The vine and the branches as they go out onto the Mount of Olives, the retelling of so many wonderful and powerful things, but I think we need to hear these words on this Monday Thursday. So let me read to you from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 11. Pray that your hearts and minds are open to hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, having loved his own and to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas of Simon Iscariot to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied the towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, and Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you are. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I'm sure these words are not clear to you. I know I have studied them time and time again and don't always fully grasp their meaning. I dare say I don't have a clue about them sometimes at all. I dare to say that there's the way a lot of us have gone through Holy Week. We have thought of it on occasion. We have considered the weight of it, but it is too much. We only muddle around the surface. We get into the edge, maybe. We don't dive into the full depth of what is happening. Christ is trying to demonstrate to his disciples that we need to be caring for one another in a delicate and 
delicate and sensitive situation. As a pastor who has been to services of feet washing, it is amazing how unsettled we are for people to see our feet. The reality is very few, if any of us, are foot models that we have feet that we would want people to look at. We're often sure that the various things that happen to our feet, which we walk around in tight shoes and all the different things that go on, that it would just be terrible to have to have someone wash our feet. We're afraid they might smell. We're afraid they might judge whether or not we have some foot problems. Any number of things embarrass us. Can you imagine what it would be like washing feet and walking in the desert in sandals? Or worse than the desert, that they were walking around a crowded city where people do everything in the street, everything we don't want to talk about. The street would just be a mess, a terrible, terrible mess. If the Lord of the universe, Christ, who is our Savior, came and washed their feet, even the feet of the one who was to betray him. I've discovered myself spending all the time thinking about Judas in these days in my thoughts of Holy Week, the great betrayer. Christ had to be betrayed. There had to be that whole reality happen for Christ to make it to the cross. And I'm sure God would have had other ways to do it, but Judas was doing in part what God wanted him to do. And yet all of the disciples together are like, no, we're not the one who would betray. We wouldn't do that. But the reality for all of us is we betray God whether we recognize we're doing it or not. We turn to our own path, to our own thoughts. We go after what we want to do. The whole thing comes to do we turn back to God? Do we allow God to wash us? Do we submit and are we led by the Good Shepherd? The reality is we're all being led by something and if it's not God, who is it? Are we following someone or something that's not God and is it as holy as we believe or are we just being led astray? Are we thinking we need to be the one doing all the washing and not allowing God in to care for us? Simon Peter, the one who always spoke out, said stuff that was probably being said by the others. Lord, you're going to wash my feet. They probably, the first few that had their feet washed probably couldn't believe what was happening. He probably was sitting back long enough to get to the point to think. Say, He's the Messiah. He shouldn't be washing my feet. How are you doing with letting people wash your feet? How are you with partaking in communion? Do you eat it quickly only thinking that it is just food and a little juice? It's not going to matter. Do you take it thinking of how God has washed you and made you whole and well, that God intends to sustain you and strengthen you? The mighty prophet had gotten so deep in despair into his own mind, his own thoughts, that he thought he was done. And yet God had so much more planned for him. And how just a little bread and a little drink changed all. We need to be setting our focus on God this Monday, Thursday, and every day. The Christ is soon to go to the cross would truly disturb the disciples, and they would all desert, for they couldn't handle it. And yet in the resurrection, God brings us all back to that relationship. Yes, I'm getting ahead, but the whole reality is we need to rejoice in that grace and forgiveness, to rejoice that we have a good shepherd who wants to nourish us, who wants to restore us, who wants us to rise up and do good. That is the tale of Scripture of God calling to his people time and time and time again and asking them to rise up and do good. The power of this 
bread and this cup is not in their own nature, but in the Spirit of God that indwells them. The Spirit of God that we invite into our lives in trusting that we are welcome at the table. That we don't need to be concerned or think that this table belongs to a particular church or a particular denomination, but that this is the Lord's table. It is open to all those who profess faith in Him. It is open to all those who dare and fear and perhaps even have betrayed their God but desire to turn back to our Lord and Savior. This is a table for those who know the Lord well and seek to know Him more. Let us rejoice, let us draw close to our God, and let us know that He is with us now and always. Let us pray over this wonderful God of grace and hope, God of peace, we raise our hearts to you. We lift up our heads knowing that you are our good shepherd. We give you thanks and praise, O holy God, that you continue to call us back to you, that you continue to lead us with cords of loving kindness, that you continue to give us opportunities to give you thanks and praise. We rejoice, O God, that though we may miss all the opportunities, that you continue to call us back to you and that we can turn to you. We can be made whole and well. We can be renewed and restored. We thank you, O gracious and holy God, that by your amazing grace we are renewed and restored. We are set, our feet are set back on the right path and that we can run with you and not grow weary that we can walk with you and not grow faint, that by your amazing grace we can mount up on wings as eagles and go out and be a blessing to this world, Lord. We pray that we will continue to read Scripture and that you will continue to shine your spiritual light on it so that we may see truly, Lord, that we may draw close to you and to one another, that we may be that blessing that you've called and made us to be. And we rejoice, O oh good and gracious God, that on the night that Christ was betrayed, he was thinking of us even then. That he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took a cup and raised it up, poured it out, saying, This is a new covenant, poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. So that whenever we take this bread, and drink this cup. We are drawn into new relationship with our gracious and loving God that by his spirit these simple elements become holy and mighty. By his amazing love and grace we can be so much more. Holy and mighty God, we thank you and we rejoice in this great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is coming again. Great and holy Lord, we thank you for your spirit that binds us together over vast distances, that holds us as your church, no matter where we may be, that inspires and enables us, enables us to serve one another, to be the blessing that you've called and made us to be, and allows us to be so much more. We thank you, God, that through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forevermore. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. Family of God, let us keep the feast. Let us take this bread and drink this cup, knowing that the Lord rules and reigns and cares for us now and always. To God be the glory. Amen. receive this blessing after the communion. May this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sustain, uphold, and empower you this day and forevermore. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. Family of God, may you draw close to our God. May you know that he is your everlasting Father, that he is the Prince of Peace. And no matter how dark the way may be, no matter how lost you may think you are, the Good Shepherd is with you, and his rod and his staff, they are comforting. And that even if we are a betrayer, he is ready to welcome us, to encourage us, and enable us to be so much more. Let's go out with rejoicing. Amen.
Hope to see you on Sunday. Big Spring will be meeting at 9 a.m. and Clover Hill at 1045. Have a blessed day. Love you and bye-bye.